part in this video, um, I'm going to just do a few more examples of how to use integration pi parts to find integrals. Um, in the last video, I just gave a, an introduction to the idea, and, and let me just, re just for um, the sake of review, let's remember what integration by parts is. So if I have an, um, an integral of something that uh, looks like, well, we're going to call it u times v prime. So you, you basically have two functions that are multiplied. Um, one of them we're going to consider u, and the other one we're going to consider v prime. Then the way to find that antiderivative, if we work the product rule in reverse, is u of x times v of x minus the integral of u prime v. Okay, so here's another example. Here I'm going to take a, um, a definite integral, so the integral from 1 to 4, or the area under the curve, from uh, the square root of x times the natural log of x. Okay, so um, again, the question is, the first thing we need to do is we need to identify what u is and what v prime is. All right, um, now we could let u be square root of x, but then that would leave v prime to be natural log. And we don't really know what the antiderivative of natural log is, but we do know it's derivative, it's derivative, all right? So that in itself is one way to, now actually we will actually find the, um, the antiderivative of natural log using integration by parts, but it doesn't have a simple, you know, um, antiderivative that it's just a function, we know it, it's just, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So that could be one clue. Um, so let's let u equal natural log of x, um, because u prime is something we know, right? That's just 1 over x. And we'll let v equal the square root of x, which is the same as x to the 1 half. That's not a hard one to find the antiderivative of, right? That's the power rule in reverse, so we add 1, one to the exponent. That gives us 3 halves divided by the new exponent. That gives us 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. So let's just try this and see, see how it works out. Okay, so this is going to be u times v. Um, so I have natural log of x times 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. And since this is a definite integral, that part of it is done, right? There's no, no more integration to do, so we can just evaluate that at the ends, end points of our, of our interval. Minus the integral from 1 to 4 of u prime times v. So that's these being multiplied. You know, 1 over x times 2 thirds x to the 3 halves dx. So I'd like to simplify this integrand here before we go any further. So I'll just rewrite this for right now. 2 thirds x to the 3 halves, 1 to 4. And so the 2 thirds can come out, and I'm taking 1 over x times x to the 3 halves. So that's basically taking x to the 3 halves and dividing by x. So that ultimately gives me 2 thirds and a row from 1 to 4 of x to the 1 half dx, which actually is just um, square root of x, right? Okay, let's evaluate over here. So if I put in 4, um, I get natural log of 4 times 2 thirds 4 to the 3 halves minus natural log of 1, 2 thirds, 1 to the 3 halves. So that's just going to be a number. We'll simplify that. This we've already done once, right? Um, we saw the x to the 1 half. We took it. That's, that's what the antiderivative of x to the 1 half is. So I've got minus 2 thirds times 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. And this we will evaluate. All right. Now here, um, I'm going to move this around so the number ends up out front, but 4 to the 3 halves, well first we can take the square root of 4, that's 2, raised to the third power is 8, times 2 thirds, that's 16 thirds, times the natural log of 4, natural log of 1 is 0, so we're done with this. Now, minus, and I'm going to have 4 ninths, right, um, and then I'm going to do, you know, 4, to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves, then 16 thirds natural log of 
4. Well, we've already done 4, so the 3 has, right? Square root of 4 is 2, cubed is 8, 1 any power is 1. So that's 8 minus 1, which is 7. And 7 times 4 is 28. So minus 28 over 9. So not a pretty number, but that if we could simplify that on our calculators, get it down to a decimal, that would be the area under the curve of this function from 1 to 4. Okay, let's do another example. Um, so in this example, we're going to find the integral of the natural log of the natural log of x over x dx. And the question is, how do we start here? Well, you might notice that this, well, you may or may not notice, but we can rewrite this as the integral of natural log of natural log of x times 1 over x dx. So notice we have a function and its derivative in here. So that suggests that we should um, use u substitution, all right, and not integration by parts. So let's Let's go ahead and, um, and, and do that substitution. Um, since I already know kind of how the story ends, I know that we're going to use integration by parts after we do the substitution. So I want to reserve u for integration by parts. So I'm going to let t equal natural log of x because then I get that dt equals 1 over x dx. So that's covered by my dt. This so this is going to be t, this is going to be dt, so now my new improved integral is this. Now this is actually one um, that we can also use integration by parts. There's a little bit of a trick here. So the trick is to recognize that natural log of t is the same as 1 times natural log of t, and we can think of 1 as a function, right? It's just a horizontal line but it is a function. Um, again here though, we need to figure out what u and v prime are. All right, now in this case, it doesn't make any sense to call natural log v prime because then we have to find the antiderivative, but that's the problem we're trying to figure out. So that would kind of keep us in, you know, infinite circles. So let's let v prime equal one, and we'll let u equal natural log of t because we know what u prime is, right? That's one over t. And if I do the antiderivative of 1, the derivative of what equals 1? Well, that's just going to be t. All right? So now what I end up with is u times v, or t times the natural log of t, um, minus the integral of u prime times v here. So that's 1 over t times t dt. But 1 over t times t is just 1. So I'm left with t natural log of t minus the integral of 1 dt. We've already done that, right? So I have t natural log of t minus t. Uh, don't forget, this is an antiderivative, so we're looking at plus c. Now we need to plug back in all of our, you know, remember we started off with something in terms of x. And we're looking, because this is an antiderivative, we're looking for a function of x that I can take the derivative of and get this crazy function over here. So we need to put everything uh, back in. So this just leaves us with natural log of x times the natural log of the natural log of x minus the natural log of x plus c's. Is that enough natural logs for you? Okay, so this is this is what we get just basically taking this substitution, putting natural log of x back in for t. All right, so the trick here was to recognize that we needed to do a substitution first, and then we reduced it to something we could use integration by parts on. All right, one more example that I would like to do um, involves this integral where we have uh, integral of x squared e to the x dx, all right? So, again, if you look at this, we don't really know how to find the antiderivative of that directly. Um, we might try some different things, but it 
professionally, we're going to do integration by parts. There's no substitution. Remember, for substitution, what you're looking for is a function and its derivative somehow kind of hidden or wrapped up in the whole thing. Uh, but e to the x and x squared, um, they don't they don't look anything like each other. They're not really related in terms of functions and derivatives or antiderivatives. Um, so let's um let's just you know let's say we really don't know. We need to figure out what u and what v prime are going to be, so we can use our formula u times v minus d integral of u prime times v. Um, so let's just look at what happens if we let u equal e to the x and v prime equal to x squared. So then u prime is e to the x, v is x cubed over 3. All right, so that wasn't so bad. Um, so then this would give us u times v, which is um, x cubed over 3 times e to the x minus um, u prime, the, well, the, the integral of u prime times v. So that would be x cubed over 3 e to the x dx. We can bring the one third out, so we get x cubed over 3 e to the x minus one third integral x cubed e to the x dx. Well, how do we do that? Uh, that looks an awful lot like this one, so we could we could try the same approach, right? So we can do integration by parts on this. Let u equal e to the x, so that u prime is still e to the x. We'll let v prime equal x cubed, and then that means v is the antiderivative of x cubed, which is one fourth x to the fourth. Now notice now when I do u prime times v, I'm going to have x to the fourth times e to the x. So this seems to be getting worse and not better, right? We start off with an x squared. Now we have an x cubed. Next time we do integration by parts, we're going to end up with x to the fourth. So this is one way to think about how to choose u and v prime, is we want, we want to be progressing towards something that we know how to find the antiderivative of here. So let's switch these around and, and see what happens. So down here, let's let u equal x squared, and we'll let v prime equal e to the x, so that u prime equals 2x, and v equals, well, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. So now, for the antiderivative of x squared, e to the x, u times v, so we get back our x squared, e to the x, uh, minus u prime times v, or 2x e to the x dx. All right, well, we still don't have something we know how to take the, find the antiderivative or the integral of, but notice that we're, we're better now, right? We've gone from originally having an x squared, now we're, we're down to having an x. So let's see what we can do with this. We have x squared e to the x minus, I'm gonna bring this two out, um, integral x e to the x dx, yep, let's use integration by parts on that, all right? So if we let u equal x, v prime equal e to the x, then u prime is one, v is e to the x. Notice now that we're, we're gonna get u prime times v, we're just gonna get e to the x. That's something we can do. So we're, we're, we're making progress. All right, let's see. x squared e to the x minus two times this whole thing. So u times v, that's x, e to the x, um, and then we're gonna uh, subtract the integral of u prime times v, so that's just gonna give me e to the x dx. All right, that's, well, let me just rewrite it, x squared e to the x minus two times x e to the x minus e to the x, Remember, we are going to have a plus c on here because we're finding a general antiderivative, not a definite integral. Um, let's distribute and try to simplify here a little bit. x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x, and then the minus 2 times the negative e to the x, that's plus 2 e to the x plus c. Notice that each of these terms has an e to the x, so we could simplify a little bit further if we wanted to. x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus c. So sometimes there's a couple couple things to note here. One is that we want to choose u and v prime 
wisely. And sometimes that's just going to be a matter of experience. You know, you go through this a couple of times and you see what's happening. So you want to notice what's happening here. Is, is what you're getting over here for your U prime V, is that progressing towards something that you could find the antiderivative of if you can't find it immediately? Or is it getting worse, going from x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth? Um, the other thing is that sometimes you may have to apply integration by parts more than once to kind of break this down to something that you know ultimately got down to this integral of e to the x. That's something that we knew how to do. So those are just a couple tips as you um, try some of these integrals using integration by parts.